my daughter Rain just turned four years old and she has uh, cerebral palsy. And luckily her CP is considered moderate and it basically affects her ability to balance and to walk. And because of that, she spends a lot of time in a wheelchair. And when you have a kid in a wheelchair, you find yourself feeling like you're moving through a world that isn't really designed with them in mind. It's like you're, you're living just on the outside of these boundaries that people, that typical people get to move seamlessly through. And when the doctor first gave my wife Valerie and I the news about this diagnosis, I, I had this knee-jerk reaction where I started thinking about all the things that she was never going to be able to do. I started creating all these boundaries for her. I thought, you know, she's never going to be able to take a long hike in the woods with me, and she's never going to go surfing with me, and she's never going to be the first female shortstop in Major League Baseball. <laughs> and then there's all these physical boundaries that she deals with every day that push her to the periphery of a typical person's world. You know, there's it's uneven sidewalks, and it's, it's always searching for a ramp or an elevator instead of being able to go up the steps right in front of her. And it's constantly waiting for the only handicapped stall in a bathroom while some guy needs extra elbow room while he's taking a poop or something. And, you know, as watching your kid having to deal with these boundaries, it can be really difficult for me. But on the other side of that, there's one space with clearly defined, well-drawn boundaries that its, its sole purpose is to make the life of a person with disabilities just a little bit easier. And it's a space that everyone in this room has looked at longingly at one point or another in their life, and it should be out of bounds to the able-bodied person, and that is the handicapped parking spot. And, you know, as a parent of a kid with a disability, I find it really frustrating and annoying when people leave their shopping carts in these spots. So I feel like it's my duty to move them whenever I see them, and, and one day I'm, I'm doing my duty, I'm, I'm moving these carts, and I pull the last one out of the spot, and this guy on a scooter wheels up and parks literally where I just moved this cart from, and I'm just furious. and. As he's getting off of his scooter, I find myself saying a little bit more aggressively than I probably intended to, like, you can't park that here. And he just looks at me like I'm a crazy person. And he says, yeah, don't worry, I'm just running it out real quick. And it just makes me even madder. And it's just like every obstacle that has been pushing my daughter to the outside all this time has just physically manifested itself in front of me in the form of this scooter driver. And I just want to, like, tear this guy apart. And but this weird thing has happened to me emotionally since I've had a daughter, and for some reason, when I get really angry, a lot of times, I'll just start to cry. And uh, <laughs> it's really hard to project an aura of, of, of authority when you're crying, when you have just tears and snots coming out of your nose. And so, you know, I've thought about this so many times. That I, what I wish I said is, I wish I said, you know, it doesn't matter how long you're gonna be, these spots aren't for you, you know, move your scooter to another spot and be thankful you have two functioning legs to walk into the store. But I did not say that. Instead, I charged right up to him and I got into his personal space and I choked back my anger tears and I just said, I'm telling. And he said, <laughs> and he said, you're telling? And I said, yeah, that's right, I'm telling. And I spun around and I started walking towards the store to tell on this guy and it just, <laughs> degenerated into this weird race because then he started going towards the store and we both got inside at the same time and I tried to look for an employee and he went to like buy milk or something and I saw this assistant manager that I recognized and he knew that I had a daughter in a wheelchair and he saw what was going on in my face and he was like is everything okay what happened and I just told on this guy so hard I was just like <laughs> I was like you know, this guy on the scooter, he just parked in a handicapped spot and he's not supposed to park in the spot. And I told him he's not supposed to park in the spot, but he's not gonna move and now he's in here buying milk or something. And he was just as shocked and appalled as I was. And he said, hold on a second, I'm gonna take care of this right now. And he went over to the public address system and he basically publicly shamed this guy. And he said, you know, whoever parked their scooter in a handicapped parking spot needs to move it right now. And I don't know if the people in the checkout line like saw my face, but they all sort of rallied behind me and they all looked shocked and appalled. And this one guy even audibly booed, which was really nice, I thought. <laughs> and, and then I started scanning the checkout line to see if I could find the scooter driver so I could point him out to the mob and sort of <laughs> like publicly shame him some more. And a few minutes went by and I, I didn't see him, so I went outside and his scooter was gone and I felt really good because there was no way he was able to buy anything in that amount of time. 
And I felt really vindicated and invigorated when I left because I felt like this group of strangers saw this injustice and they rallied behind me and they just wanted to help. And, and then I started thinking about all the, the obstacles that I was talking about earlier that Rain has to deal with on a daily basis. And I started thinking about all the people who offered to open doors for us or move things out of our way or just smile or give her a thumbs up as she's cruising around. And it made me feel like the world is full of good people who want to help. And, and then, you know, I know as her father, I'm going to have to, you know, defend her boundaries, but I'm also, as she gets older, I'm going to have to teach her to, how to stand up for herself, and I want to teach her that if she sees somebody acting unjustly, she needs to say something, and she also needs to accept people's help when they offer it to her, and that doesn't apply just because she happens to have a disability. And, you know, maybe she won't be able to take a long hike in the woods with me, but, you know, we're already teaching her how to ride a horse, so eventually she'll get in the saddle and we'll hit the trails that way, and we've already found these groups that do adaptive surfing, so she's already been in the waves and she loves being in the ocean. And, you know, she's probably not gonna play shortstop in the major leagues, but most of your kids probably aren't either. And so, <laughs> but when we go to the stadium to watch a game, she's gonna have a great parking spot. Thank you. <laughs>